These are the usual categories of laryngeal problem, yet the larynx forms only one small part of the voice. It is the oscillator. It makes a sound, a buzz, like blowing between two blades of grass. More like that in some of us than in others. <laughs> it sounds a lot like a trumpet mouthpiece without the trumpet attached. <coughs> Not a very attractive sound, especially if you realize that that's what probably comes out of Pavarotti's throat, too. <laughs> but it passes through the resonator system, a series of interconnected resonators more complex than the brass part of the trumpet, but analogous, which are responsible for the quality of the sound. This is the supraglottic vocal tract, the pharynx, the tongue, the palate, the nasal cavities, and to a lesser extent than many of us think, the sinuses. Gross changes in this area are obvious even to us physicians. The hypernasal speech of someone with a cleft palate, the hyponasal speech of somebody with complete obstruction. Subtle changes from swelling, scarring, neuromuscular dysfunction in the palate produce equally real changes that are immediately audible to a singer or a singing teacher but may be a little more difficult for a laryngologist to perceive, especially if the doctor is not familiar with the voice before. Nevertheless, they are very real changes in the voice. In addition to the oscillator, which makes the sound, and the resonator, which is responsible in large measure for the timbre, the voice requires a power source. Singers refer to this complex of power source as the diaphragm. The diaphragm, as we all know, is primarily an inspiratory muscle which helps us breathe in, although it can be coactivated and have something to do with support, really. But primarily, we learn new things every year. But primarily, support consists of the lungs and the rib cage, the chest, and the abdominal and back muscles. Singers are frequently thought of as having large chests. In fact, the primary respiratory difference between trained singers and untrained people is not so much total lung capacity, but increased lung efficiency. Singers learn to use a higher percentage of the air in their lungs, decreasing their residual volume. This should come as no surprise. This is exactly the same pulmonary change we see in any trained athlete, whether it is a singer, a runner, or a ballet dancer. 